Hi, this is Daniel DeTuro. What's the link between carbs, sugar, and diabetes? In this video, I'll share what is diabetes and its symptoms, carbs and diabetes, diabetes risk factors, added sugars, and sugar-free does not mean carb-free. Diabetes is a disease that results in too much sugar in your blood. Blood sugar is glucose. Your body tries to maintain about 4 grams of total blood sugar 24 hours a day. Sugar provides energy to every cell in your body, including your brain. Too much blood sugar can lead to diabetes. There's two types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is also known as insulin-dependent diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, the body's immune system attacks and destroys the pancreas's insulin-making cells. People with type 1 diabetes must check their blood sugar and are dependent on insulin injections throughout the day to maintain safe blood sugar levels. Type 2 diabetes is a condition where the pancreas produces insulin but is overwhelmed by the amount of blood sugar. Cells have all the sugar they need. Excess sugar is converted to body fat or glycogen, but blood sugar levels do not return to normal. A simple blood test measures blood sugar levels. The test is usually done after a 12-hour fast. Another measurement of diabetes is A1C levels. This test does not require fasting. Normal fasting blood glucose is less than 100 mg per deciliter or an A1C level less than 5.7. For adults with diabetes, fasting blood sugar should be less than 100 mg per deciliter and A1C less than 7. Without regular physical examinations by a doctor or healthcare provider, type 2 diabetes can go undetected for years until symptoms develop. Symptoms are the same for type 1 and type 2 diabetes. They include fatigue, blurred vision, increased thirst, frequent urination, extreme hunger, unexplained weight loss, frequent infections, and the presence of ketones in the urine. Diabetes is one of the leading causes of blindness and foot and toe amputations. Carbohydrates are sugars and starches. When you eat carbohydrates, your small intestine breaks down sugars and starches into glucose that is absorbed into your bloodstream for fuel. As blood glucose levels rise, a signal is sent to your pancreas to release insulin. Insulin acts like a key. When the lock is open, cells can absorb blood glucose for energy. When the lock is closed, the flow of glucose to cells stops. When you are awake, food is your primary source of glucose. While you sleep or during long periods between meals, Glucose comes from glycogen reserves in your liver and muscles. That's when everything works. Instead of a diet of minimally processed natural carbs, many people flood their bodies with refined carbs. The pancreas is forced to produce more insulin than it was designed for to maintain safe blood glucose levels. Humans are the only animal that eats refined carbs and added sugars. Although diabetes is sometimes called sugar diabetes, a more accurate name is sugar and starch diabetes. Starch is a chain of glucose molecules and glucose is blood sugar. Too many carbs overwhelms the pancreas and provides more sugar than the body needs. How much carbs do you need? Like diets, there is no one-size-fits-all daily carb limit. Let's assume a person needs 2,500 calories a day 
and has type 2 diabetes. This person eats a balanced diet providing 50% carb calories, 30% fat, and 20% protein. We know carbs provide 4 calories per gram. 1,250 carb calories equals 312 grams. Divided by 3 meals, we'd average 104 carb grams per meal. The 104 grams of total carbs includes sugar, starch, and fiber. Omitting snacks, we'll assume 104 grams of carbs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. A popular breakfast is a bagel with cream cheese. Is a large blueberry bagel with cream cheese too many carbs? This breakfast provides 48 grams of total carbs, less than 50% of our 104 gram limit. I know what some of you are thinking. Refined carbs are bad because they cause blood sugar spikes. While it is true refined carbs increase blood glucose faster than unrefined carbs, if your body can handle 104 grams of carbs and you eat 48 grams, you are not overloading the system. I'm not saying eating refined wheat bagels is a nutritious breakfast. I'm just pointing out eating one or two bagels does not exceed my hypothetical carb limit. I once saw an overweight teenage boy walking to school carrying a two-liter bottle of soda and a large candy bar. Is a breakfast of two liters of sugar-sweetened cola and a large candy bar too many carbs? Total carbs for this breakfast? 275 grams. So in this example, one bagel with cream cheese provides 46% of our 104 gram limit, while the soda and candy bar provides 264%. The cola and candy breakfast provides 88% of total daily carbs from just one meal. Oatmeal usually makes the list of bad carbs, but is a serving of oatmeal with one half kiwi too many carbs? One serving provides 32 grams, or 31% of our 104 gram total. White potatoes is another food low carb diets love to hate. Is this meal of slow cooker mushroom chicken with mashed potatoes, carrots and green beans too many carbs? Total carbs, 51 grams. About 50% of our meal limit. You can double the serving size and still eat less than 104 grams of carbohydrates. Why the hysteria over refined flour, starchy vegetables, and added sugar? The answer is simple. Eating a diet providing too many carbohydrates and total calories on a daily basis. Being overweight and eating too many refined carbohydrates increases your risk for type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is relatively rare. According to the CDC, between 5 to 10 percent of diabetics are type 1. It can develop at any age and there is no cure. Until the late 20th century, type 2 diabetes was also rare. Many factors increase the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Common risk factors include being overweight or obese, being age 45 or older, a family history of diabetes, your race, high blood pressure, low level of HDL cholesterol, high level of triglycerides, a sedentary lifestyle, and a history of heart disease or stroke. In most cases, the leading causes are being overweight, living a sedentary lifestyle, and race. Leading causes for being overweight or obese include a sedentary lifestyle, too many added sugar calories, and a diet providing too many calories to maintain a healthy weight. 
Today, there is an added risk factor, heredity. Obese parents are having obese children. It's estimated prehistoric peoples ate about 10 pounds of natural sugars a year. This was sugar from fruit, vegetables, and honey. 10 pounds of sugar a year is about 12.4 grams a day. In addition to natural sugars in foods, many Americans average about 125 grams of added sugars a day. Added sugars are all sugars that do not occur naturally in foods. They include white, brown, and raw sugars, honey, agave nectar, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, dextrose, invert sugar, malt sugar, maltose, maple syrup, cane juice, molasses, and more. With a few exceptions, most added sugars are modern inventions that were never part of the human diet. We are born craving sugar, but it was for natural sugars in milk and fruit. Recommended limits for added sugars are about 70% less than the national average. A reduction of 350 to 400 calories a day. Added sugar does not include natural sugars in fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. As the number of overweight and obese people increased during the 1960s, the cause was thought to be high-fat, high-calorie diets. To reduce fat, food manufacturers cranked out hundreds of low- and reduced-fat foods. But low- and zero-fat foods were not low-calorie foods. In many cases, fat was replaced with refined carbs, usually sugars. The result, an increased number of overweight and obese people. Then, too much sugar was identified as the root cause. Store shelves were packed with sugar-free beverages and foods. For a person with diabetes, the problem is not just added sugar, but eating too many carb calories. And carbs includes sugars and starch. Sugars and starch are broken down into glucose. Fad, low-carb, and keto diets reduce total carbs, what they call net carbs, to about 60 grams a day. This meal with 51 grams of carbs is a high-carb meal for a low-carb diet. But most people do not become diabetic eating minimally processed foods. They develop type 2 diabetes eating more carb calories than their bodies need and was designed to handle. They flood their bodies with highly processed, refined white flour and sugar foods. People develop diabetes when their diet is primarily natural foods that have been turned into unnatural foods. This apple and slice of apple pie provide about the same amount of food, but the apple has less than one-fourth the calories and less than one-half the carbs. In this video, I've shared that some facts include carbohydrates are plant foods, Carb energy comes from sugar and starch. Modern diets provide more carbs than the body needs. Carb sugars and starch are converted to glucose. The pancreas releases insulin to allow cells to use glucose for fuel. Excess glucose is converted to glycogen or body fat. Too many carbs can increase blood sugar levels and high blood glucose is called diabetes. Some myths are all carbs are bad. Only low-carb diets prevents and cures type 2 diabetes. If it has zero sugar, it's healthy for you. Fruit is high in sugar and should be avoided. And you must omit all high-starch foods like bread, pasta, and potatoes the rest of your life. Please leave a comment if you have any questions about this video. 
Thank you for watching and healthy eating.